Gitanjali or Song Offerings is a collection of poems Rabindranath Thakur, anglicized as Tagore, wrote to express devotion to the Creator. The word Gitanjali comes from Geet, meaning song, and Anjali, meaning offering, and thus together means an offering of songs. Tagore was the first non-European to be awarded Nobel Prize in Literature in 1913. In the citation, the Nobel Committee wrote, The Nobel Prize in Literature 1913 was awarded to Rabindranath Tagore because of his profoundly sensitive, fresh and beautiful verse by which, with consummate skill, he has made his poetic thought expressed in his own English words a part of the literature of the West. Gitanjali was originally written in Bengali and then translated into English by the poet himself who, in his own words, never had the full benefit of a regular education. Robindranath Tagore was a Bengali artist who wrote novels, short stories, poems, plays, essays, composed music and took up paintings. Tagore was brought up in a cultural home environment of poetry, music and classical art. The Jorashaku Thakurbari in Jorashaku, north of Kolkata, West Bengal, India, is the ancestral home of the Tagore family. The Robindra Bharati University campus is located in Jorashanku. It is where the poet was born in 1861, spent most of his childhood and died on 7 August 1941. In Gitanjali, Tagore distinguishes between the creator and his creation. He presented the human character as a lowly being, dressed in rags, full of debts and failures, waiting for the Lord to pass by her house. The praise for the beauty of nature features prominently in his songs. Ami bhikkha kore phirte chilem gramer pothe pothe Tumi tokhon chole chile tomar shorno rathe Apurbo ek shopno shomo lagte chilo chokkhe momo Ki bichitro shobha tomar ki bichitro shaj Ami mone bhabte chilem e kon maharaj Pamar milan lai tumi ashcha kabe hiki tumar chandru shurjo tumai rak bhiko thai hiki pamar milan. Lagi tu me ashtukabi hiki. While most of the poems and songs were written in Shanti Niketan, a good number was written in Shilaita also. Tagore was due to sail from Calcutta on 19 March 1912. On the night before his departure, he was suddenly taken ill and the doctors forbade an immediate voyage. His luggage was on board and had to be sent back from Madras where the ship halted next. He was disappointed at this unforeseen cancellation of his voyage. He sought consolation and strength by retiring to Shilaita on the banks of river Padma. It was here that he began to translate for the first time some of his Gitanjali songs into English. The story is in his own words. It was then the month of Choitro, March, April. The air was thick with the fragrance of mango blossoms. All hours of the day were filled with the song of birds. When a child is full of vigor, he does not think of his mother. It's only when he's tired that he wants to nestle in her lap. That 
was exactly my position. With all my heart and with all my holiday, I seemed to have settled comfortably in the arms of Choitro, without missing a particle of its light, its air, its scent and its song. In such a state, one cannot remain idle. It's an old habit of mine, as you know, when the air strikes my bones, they tend to respond in music. Amar khela jakhun chilo tomar shani Takhun ke tumita ke janto Takhun chilo na bhai chilo na laj moni Jeevan bohe jeto ashanto Khela jakhun Chilo to mar shane. He talks in his Nobel return speech about the solitude in Shilaita, amid which he began his translations. I remember how my life's work developed from the time when I was very young. When I was 25, I used to live in utmost seclusion in the solitude of an obscure Bengal village by the river Padma in the boathouse. The wild ducks which came during the time of autumn were my only living companions and in that solitude I seemed to have drunk in the open space like wine overflowing with sunshine and the murmur of the river used to speak to me and tell me the secrets of nature. In a letter to her niece Indira Devi, Tagore recollects his experience of his time in Shilaida. At Shilaida, I took up the poems of Gitanjali and set myself to translate them one by one. The pages of a small exercise book came to be filled gradually and with it in my pocket I boarded the ship. The idea of keeping it in my pocket was that when my mind became restless on the high seas, I would recline on a deck chair and set myself to translate one or two poems from time to time. And that is what actually happened. You may wonder why such a crazy ambition should I possess in such a weak state of health. But believe me, I did not undertake this task in the spirit of reckless bravado. I simply felt the urge to recapture through the medium of another language the feelings and sentiments which had created such a feast of joy within me in the days gone by. Gitanjali Rabindranath ke porichito kollo paschato deshe. Ebang bola jay, je shara prithibit ke Bangla bhasha aur sahito ke porichito kollo. Rabindranath jokhon samokalen prithibe niye tar bhavnar kotha bolte lagle. क्षतिचयिचितर
Tagore reached London on 16 June 1912 along with his son Rothindranath and daughter-in-law Protima Devi. In Oak Park Hill, London, he handed over his notebook of translated poems to William Rothenstein, the renowned artist with whom Tagore had a previous acquaintance. 16 June 1912 Tagore with his son and daughter-in-law took a train from Dover to London to meet Rothenstein. The Gitanjali manuscript was in his briefcase. They left the station leaving the briefcase behind. Just before meeting Rothenstein, Tagore suddenly realized that he had lost his briefcase somewhere. Worried, they searched everywhere possible but failed to find it. Tagore asked his son to go to the London Tube's lost property office to look for it. The briefcase was found with the manuscript safe inside at the office of Sharing Cross Station. What was the first song he translated? While the chronology of translations in Gitanjali suggests somewhat different, Tagore mentions in a reception speech on 17 November 1913 that the song Kola Hol To Barun Hulo, No More Noisy Loud Words From Me, Such Is My Master's Will, as the first song he translated. The Bengali version of Gitanjali, published on August 14, 1910, had 157 lyrical poems. From these, Tagore translated 53 into English and included a further 50 poems for the English version. This came from his earlier works, namely Gitimallo 15, Noibeddo 16, Kea 11, Shishu 3, and one each from Kalpuna, Sharon, Choitali, and Utsargo, and one more song, Alo Amar Alo Ogo, Light, My Light, from the play Ochalayatun. This was published by the Indian Society of London in November 1912. The Bengali version of Gitanjali united different psychological mindsets in a central place. And the English version was not just a book of verse or another book of Tagore. It was the gateway to the West from the platform of the East. The collected poems were mostly songs representing some of the best of his compositional style. Rothenstein was deeply impressed with the manuscript Tagore gave him. He had copies typed and sent to William Butler Yeats, Stafford Brook, and Andrew Bradley, all renowned British poets. Rothenstein arranged a reading of Tagore's poems at his house in Hampstead before personalities like May Sinclair, Evanil Underhill, Ernest Rise, Fox Strangways, Robert Trevelyan, Ezra Pound, Alice Maynell, and Henry Nevinson. William Yeats read some of the poems which made a profound impression among the guests. Several receptions were given to the poet, first by the East and West Club on 8 July. The invitation of the India Society's reception in his honour at the Trocadero restaurant on 10 July 1912 was signed by Rodenstein along with W. Hornell, Mrs. Saldam Shaw 
and A. H. Fox tramways. The price of the ticket was fixed at five shillings. This particular dinner was the most significant event of Tagore's life. It paved the way for his easy entry into the Western intellectual circle. The Times reported on 13 July with the headline, Dinner to Mr. Rubindranath Tagore. Here also Eats read Tagore's English translation of three lyrics. Radcliffe seconded the toast and spoke of the remarkable record of the Tagore family in the intellectual leadership of Bengal. The cover of the book Gitanjali had a special look. A portrait of the poet from a drawing of William Rodenstein appeared. In March 1913, Macmillan published their own edition. By the end of that year, it had been reprinted an astonishing 13 times before Rabindranath Tagore won the Nobel Prize. Yeats wrote an introduction to the work. These lyrics, which in the original are full of subtlety of rhythm, of untranslatable delicacies of color, of metrical invention, display in their thought a world I have dreamt of all my life long. Long books where no page perhaps has any quality to make writing a pleasure. Being confident in some general design, just as we fight and make money and fill our heads with politics, all dull things in the doing. While Mr. Tagore, like the Indian civilization itself, has been content to discover the soul and surrender himself to its spontaneity. What made Tagore so devoted? Here's the confession. I have carried the manuscript of these translations with me for days. Reading it in railway trains or on the top of omnibuses and in restaurants. And I have often had to close it, lest some stranger would see how much it moved me. Why did Tagore turn to the West? রবীন্দ্রনাথ যখন সাহিত্যচর্চা শুরু করেন তখন ইউরোপ সাহিত্যে সংস্কৃতিতে সভ্যতায় এক বিশিষ্টতা অর্জন করেছিল এবং তিনি ভেবেছিলেন প্রাচ্য এবং পাশ্চাত্যের সম্মিলনে নতুন একটি সভ্যতা নতুন একটি সৃজন কল্পনার মাধ্যমে সাহিত্য সংস্কৃতিকে একটি নব রূপে প্রতিষ্ঠিত করা সম্ভব এবং সেই কাজটি Tagore's poems and songs in Gitanjali were spiritualized and the prayers or offerings were mostly offered to the Almighty. But God to him is not the supreme religious deity. His refuge may be nature or any abstract identity or even a personality. 
even after the death of his youngest son Shomindranath Tagore maintained his emotional balance he composed songs praying not for any direct material help but to gain insight prabhu aji to mar prabhu aji to mar The presentation speech of 10 December 1913 by Harald Jarne, chairman of the Nobel Committee of the Swedish Academy, justifies this Nobel award in this manner. The features of this poetry that won immediate and enthusiastic admiration are the perfection with which the poet's own ideas and those he has borrowed have been harmonized into a complete whole. His rhythmically balanced style combines at once the feminine grace of poetry with the power of prose, his austere taste in the choice of words and his use of the other elements of expression in a borrowed tongue. those features an original work as such but which at the same time render more difficult its reproduction in another language tagore's gitanjali in a real and full sense has belonged to english literature for the author himself who by education and practice is a poet in his native indian tongue has bestowed upon the poems a new address alike perfect in form and personally original in inspiration this has made them accessible to all in england america and the entire western world gitanjali's name shoneni erakom bangali sankha hoyto khub kom ontoto amra je bangalider jani je bangali on kichu ta bangla bhasha jane motamoti bhabe ekta shiksha prapto bangali তারা গীতাঞ্জলি সবাই পড়েছেন কিংবা নাম শুনেছেন কিংবা গীতাঞ্জলি বাড়িতে রাখেন এর কারণ বোধ হয় একটাই যে গীতাঞ্জলি দর্শন নয় গীতাঞ্জলি সহজতা গীতাঞ্জলি অনেক গভীর কথা এত হৃদয়স্পর্শীভাবে এত মর্মস্পর্শী করে এত গহন কথা তুলে আনতে পারেন এত সহজে বলতে পারেন রবীন্দ্রনাথ মানে সহজ কথার যদি পাঠ কাউকে নিতে হয় গভীর কথা এবং সহজ কথার এই সংশ্লেষ যেভাবে গীতাঞ্জলিতে হয়েছে খুব কম কবিতা কিংবা গানের মধ্যে সেভাবে দেখা যায় দ্য নিউজ অফ নোবেল প্রাইজ ফর রবীন্দ্রনাথ রিচ টু গোর ইন দ্য লেট আফটারনুন অফ ফোরটিন নভেম্বর নাইনটিন থার্টিন দে ওয়াজ নো শান্তি নিকেতন আ কেবল ওয়াজ সেন্ড ফ্রম ক্যালকাটা হি ওয়াজ দ্য উইথ হিস ফিউচার বায়োগ্রাফার Edward Thompson was on his first visit to Shantiniketan. This is how Tagore expressed his feelings. I remember the afternoon when I received the cable graph from my publisher in England that the prize had been awarded to me. I was staying then at the school Shantiniketan. At that moment we were taking a party over to a forest nearby. When I was passing by the telegram office and the post office A man came running to us and held up the telegraphic message. I had also an English visitor with me in the same carriage. I did not think that the message was of any importance and I just put it into my pocket thinking that I would read it when I reached my destination. But my visitor supposed he knew the contents and he urged me to read it saying that it contained an important message. and i opened and read the message which i could hardly believe i first thought that possibly the telegraphic language was not quite correct and that i might misread the meaning but at last i felt certain about it and you can well understand how rejoicing it was for my boys at the school and for the teachers what touched me more deeply than anything else was that 
these boys who loved me and for whom I had the deepest love felt proud of the owner. I realized that my countrymen would share with me the owner also. Swedish Academy, Onnatama Sadosho, Pondit Manus, even Kobi, Per Halmström, Report Party Shrink, Nobel Committee. Taitini Bolesini, J. Ami Arosho Botrishe, Gotten Mitu Pore, Europe, Unokono Deshe. এমন কোন কবিতা পড়িনি যাতে এর কবিতায় যে মানবতাবাদ মনুষ্যত্ব বোধ এবং সাত্বিকতা প্রকাশিত হয়েছে সেই রকম তো এই কবি অবশ্যই নোবেল পুরস্কার পাওয়ার যোগ্য দ্য ক্যাম্পাস অফ দ্য শান্তি নিকেতন গেইনড আ নিউ লুক দ্য বয়েজ রিজয়েসড but they actually didn't know what the Nobel Prize was, what it really meant, who gave it, why was it given. They only realized that their Gurudev had achieved something great, something wonderful. This led them to form ranks and march round the ashram singing their school song, Amadir Shanti Niketan. The celebration continued till night. Responses to the news of Tagore being a recipient of the Nobel Prize were wide-ranging, both at home and abroad. Earlier, his edition of Gitanjali, which had been published in London in November 1912, had received good reviews from the British press. In its review, the Times Literary Supplement, 7 November 1912, writes, In reading these poems, one feels not that they are the curiosities of an alien mind, but that they are prophetic of the poetry that might be written in England if our poets could attain to the same harmony of emotion and idea. That divorce of religion and philosophy which prevailed among us is a sign of our failure in both. Jathai thake shabar adham dinir hote din seikhane je tomar choran raje. Hemor durbhaga desh jadere kore chopaman, apamani hote hobe tahadir shabar shaman. Ita Gitanjali message, Rabinath a human message ta Gitanjali bhatu te dichen. Rabinath bola chen ki amar mukti aloy aloy. Amar mukti ghase ghase. Gitanjali ke ami bhakti kote bhabe otton to guru to prono kari mani kori sangitika. এবং এই সঙ্গীতের সর্বশ্রেষ্ঠ প্রকাশ হচ্ছে গীতাঞ্জলি Every laureate is supposed to deliver a lecture, but in Tagore's case, it was delivered eight years later. The poet was unable to travel to Stockholm due to the impending war and the distance. On behalf of the poet, then British Charles de Fer in Stockholm, Ambassador Clive received the gold medal and the diploma. Tagore's official response to his win was a single sentence telegram read out by Clive at the Nobel Banquet the Grand Hotel Stockholm, December 10, 1913. I beg to convey to the Swedish Academy my grateful appreciation 
of the breath of understanding which has brought the distant near and has made a stranger a brother this statement shows how to go view the world and his expectations from it gaaye amar phulok lage jokhe ghanai ghot gaaye amar phulok lage jokhe ghanai ghot hridaye mo ke vedhe che ranga rakhir do गाए हमार फूलक लगे चोखे घाई घो ड्यूरिंग टेगोज अमेरिका टूर इन 1920 व्हेन द सेक्रेटरी ऑफ द स्वीडिश एकेडमी डॉक्टर एरिक कारफेल्ड केम टू नो अबाउट द पॉसिबिलिटी ऑफ द पोएट्स विजिट ही सेंट अ टेलीग्राम सेइंग इफ यू इंटेंड गोइंग स्वीडन Swedish Academy bids you welcome to Nobel Feast December 10. Tagore could not reach Sweden in time. When he did, it was May 24, 1921. On May 26, after 8 years, Tagore delivered his Nobel lecture. The 16-page lecture commenced thus: I'm glad that I have been able to come to your country at last and that I may use this opportunity for expressing my gratitude to you for the honor you have done to me and rewarding me by giving me the nobel prize rumors and criticisms were in plenty the most popular of the rumors was that w b yeats had rewritten gitanjali a british correspondent connected with the times sir valentine shirol openly accused tagore of taking credit for yeats's work This sort of rumor also reached Tagore. He had a philosophical response. Tagore told Rodenstein ironically, "Naturally such rumors get easy credence among our people who can believe in all kinds of miracles except genuine worth in their own men." Rogunath jokhon Nobel puraskar peye gelen tokhon amader deshe oneker mone holo je manush school college er porikha pass koren ni इंगरेजी लिखलें जे इंगरेजी लेखा लंडने छापा हल एवं नोबल पुरस्कार पे गल घटल कि परस्पर कथा बार्ता गुंजन गुजब जेहेतु येट्सर भूमिका लिखे प्रधानत कथा उठल येट्स क्षति कर जामान विषय ये प्राय निश्चित कर तुलें भैलेंटीन चेरल इंगरेज कूटनीतिविद कलकता हाईकोर्टे विचारपति नवब शमसुलदार अभ्यर्थनार जन आयोजित एक सभाएं जे इंगरेजी गीतांजलि आसले इर ही रचना खूब आश्चर्य विषय जो किल पर निजे ए रकम एक दावी करल जे गीतांजल इंगरेजी आगाघोड़ा संशोधन कर एक प्रतिबाद कर गवीन्द्रनाथ बंधु क्यों क्यों स्टार मोर विशेषकर रोदुस्टाइन जार का इंगरेजी बांगला दुई पांडुलिपि छोड़ जी तो बोलते परि ये कतटुकू परिवर्तन कर रोदनस्टाइन एंड आदार्स डिड नट एग्री टू द्रिटिसिजम Most of the editing by Yeats took the form of punctuations and choice of words, something that did not change the originality of Tagore's works. Even then, it was a cause of great discomfort to Tagore and his followers for a long time. He always humbled himself with the conventional Indian brand of submission. Fuel was added to the flame when ironically Yeats who once praised Tagore and wrote the preface himself gave some support to the idea in 1917 he told Macmillan 
William Rothenstein will tell you how much I did for Gitanjali. It was a delight and at my request Tagore has made no acknowledgement. Yet suggested slight changes only, but the main text was printed as it came from Tagore's hands. I knew that it was said in India that the success of Gitanjali was largely owing to Yeats's rewriting of Tagore's English. That this is false can easily be proved. The original Gitanjali in English and in Bengali are in my possession. Another rumor started in Sweden that the Swedish Academy had chosen Tagore under pressure from Prince William of Sweden, who had visited Calcutta not long before. In late 1913, the prince published an account of his travels in Asia, written in Swedish language, in which he described a meeting with Rabindranath Tagore and his family. The deliberations of the Swedish Academy had a far sounder basis than the rumor. What exactly had prompted the Committee of International Judges to crown a Bengali poet with banknotes? as Robert Bridges mused ironically in a letter to Tagore in June 1914. They had already considered and passed over Tolstoy, Ibsen, Zola, Steinberg, Shaw and Yeats. In 1913, they would ignore Thomas Hardy in favour of Tagore to the disappointment of the Royal Society of Literature in London, whose candidate Hardy was. Hardy never received the prize. One thing that could not be doubted was the idealism of Gitanjali. This very characteristic was crucial since Alfred Nobel's will predetermined that prize winners must have an idealistic tendency. This very factor led to the rejection of some of the great names which were being considered. Questions of race, politics and religion quickly emerged. Newspapers of the standard of the New York Times misspelled the name of Rabindranath Tagore as Babindranath. Not only that, they commented. Other newspapers also followed. The Evening Post, published from New York, reported on 13 November 1913 that the first time on record that the prize has been given to anybody but a white person. In the Los Angeles Times, one Gordon Ray Young called the decision the ignoble decision Hindu poet unworthy of Nobel Prize. In Vienna, a well-known liberal newspaper asked, Has the award of the prize been due to the exotic Buddhistic fashion? Or has England's policy in India been perhaps in favor of the crowning of the Bengali poet? This will remain the secret of the judges in Stockholm. There was a surprising development that followed. In Paris, a journalist approached Sylvan Levy, since he was a Jew, asking for an interview about La Rabin Tagoro. How ridiculous it was! Sometimes Robindranath Tagore was branded as an Aryan, while on other occasions he was portrayed as a Jew. Constant misconception about Tagore went on for a period. Sturge Moore was shocked to see the kind of proceedings the literary circle and the media carried on with deliberate ends. In January of 1914, he felt the necessity of telling Tagore. I am often angered when references to you catch my eye in the papers now. There is an itch about them to treat you unjustly. As before, they were fulsome in praise. রবীন্দ্রনাথের গীতাঞ্জলি নানা কারণেই অত্যন্ত গুরুত্বপূর্ণ শুধু এর জন্য নয় যে তিনি গীতাঞ্জলির জন্য নোবেল প্রাইজ পেয়েছিলেন তা নয় এই বইটি তার যে সৃজনশীল এবং চিন্তাশীল জীবন দুটোকেই অত্যন্ত গুরুত্বপূর্ণভাবে প্রতিনিধিত্ব করে প্রমথনাথ বেশি বলবার চেষ্টা করেছেন যে বাংলা গীতাঞ্জলি রবীন্দ্রনাথের মূল ধারার বই নয় কাজেই এটা নিয়ে গুরুত্বপূর্ণভাবে আলোচনা করার বা কিছু দরকার নেই আমি তার এই কথাকেও সমর্থন করি না আমি মনে করি যে রবীন্দ্রনাথের গীতাঞ্জলি তার মূল ধারার অন্তর্গত এবং মূল ধারা বলতে আমি যা বোঝাই সেটা হচ্ছে ঈশ্বরে মানুষে মিলিয়েই হচ্ছে রবীন্দ্রনাথের মানুষের ভাবনা 
প্রকৃতি ভাবনা যা কিছু আমরা দেখি Tagore was Tagore Tagore is Tagore He loved his soul most and he considered his soul a representative element of the global humanity Gitanjali is now a subject of global study Every song every poem every line and even a single word is interpreted with due academic philosophical and cultural attitudes applied রোজ কত কি ঘটে যাহা তাহা এমন কেন সত্য হয় না বা সত্যি হয় না আহা লিখেছিলেন রবীন্দ্রনাথ সত্যি যে হয় তিনি তা ঘটিয়ে দেখিয়ে দিয়েছিলেন সেই রূপকথা রূপকাহিনী গীতাঞ্জলির গল্প Controversies and praise both have made Tagore and his works relevant as even today. He insisted on open debate on every issue and distrusted conclusions based on a mechanical formula no matter how attractive that formula might seem in isolation important as history is reasoning has to go beyond the past it is in the sovereignty of reasoning fearless reasoning in freedom that we can find rabindranath Tagore's lasting voice. Where the mind is without fear and the head is held high. Where knowledge is free. Where the world has not been broken up into fragments by narrow domestic walls. where words come out from the depth of truth where tireless striving stretches its arms towards perfection where the clear stream of reason has not lost its way into the dreary desert sand of dead habit where the mind is led forward by thee into ever widening thought and action into that heaven of freedom my father let my country awake <laughs> 